Okay. So as we do this, pro this set of problems, we've got some new material to talk about as well. Let's talk about them. We want to sketch the curve over the t-interval indicating the direction on which it's, it was traced. Well, probably the easiest way to do that would be plug it into the calculator. Plug it into the calculator. So let me get rid of the big screen for a second. Oops. There we go. All right. So clear out the old problems. And we're putting in what? T plus 1. And T squared plus T. And let's go to the window and let's set the window so that the range of T values are appropriate. And let's graph it and see what we get. Did you go to the window and set your t-min to negative 2 so it matched that? And t-max equals a positive 2 so it matched that. Did you do that? Because that would probably be where the problem is. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got, I got the same thing. It's just mine's a little bit more zoomed in. All right. So here's our sketch. What about the indicating the direction in which it's being graphed? You just do a arrow. But where's the beginning and where's the end? The beginning is negative two. The end is two. So when t is negative two, x is uh, let's negative find one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me like it's starting over here, mm -hmm. and then it's going to end up. So our direction arrow, if it would draw. By the way, is there an easy way to uh, find the regular version of the x, the xy version of this equation? No, yeah, it's probably, yeah, uh, probably something in the calculator. No, it's something you could do. I'm going to solve this, I'm gonna solve this for t. Oh, zeros, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero. x minus 1. So every place I see a t, I can put x minus 1. So y is equal to t okay. squared, but t is this, so it's y is equal to x minus 1 squared plus, 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 plus x minus 1. So y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus x minus 1. y is equal to x squared minus x plus x. Or x squared minus x. This is yeah, yeah. Does these, these cancel? Great. By the way, I might even look at it this way. It looks like this graph would have zeros when x is zero. Yep, that seems about right. And also the zero when x is one. Yeah, that's about right. So, sketch the graph indicating the direction. So it looks like the graph of this parabola and it's going in this direction. And this would probably be the point one. Um, oh, when t is negative two, this is one. When t is negative two, this is four. So, be two. so this is one, two. Yeah. And then where does it end? Uh, three. When t is two, six. this is three. And when t is two, this is yeah. six. So we're we okay now with the sketching and the arrows? Because now we got A done, and now it's time to proceed to B. Wouldn't it be negative 1? You have 1, comma 2. Yep. How about we identify the requested point? Well, I guess the requested point would be the lowest point. Now. Let's see if we can combine some ideas from earlier this year and nail the lowest point. I don't know about you, but it sure seems like this has got a horizontal tangent. So why don't we take the why don't we derive this and see?
see what we get. Dy dx. Dy dt. Oh yeah. Yep. No, dy dx equals is equal dy dt to over dx dt. Which is 2t plus 1 divided by 1. Which is 2t plus 1. And so when do we think we got that horizontal tangent? When this thing is equal to 0. Negative one. What? Let's get something up. No, I don't think so. Oh, I got it. T equals negative yeah. one half. Take it's right. Two t. Two t equals negative one. So t negative one. But but. Oh yeah, yes, it is right. We oh, t yeah. is equal to negative one half. That's not x or y. That's t. Yeah. yeah. So so the lowest point happens when t is negative one half. I'm plugging this in. Yep. Yeah. So. What is the x value at t is equal to negative one half? Negative, uh, positive one half. Yeah. And what is y at negative one half? That's positive one quarter plus a negative one half. That's so so negative one quarter. One quarter. So there's our lowest point. Oh, actually, I did part C in doing part B. Then hang on. Both sure, two thirds of one's True. By the way, that, that would suggest in part B there's another way to find the lowest point. Uh -huh. Second confirmation. Well, how about, we, how about this? We know it's a parabola that has those two roots. The vertex then has to be not just in between, at the midpoint. So if this has a root at zero and this has a root at one, that means that the one half. Well, that the x value has to be one half. And if the x value is one half, and then you can plug it back the one half into there, and then you get the other point. Oh. Huzzah? Huzzah. Huzzah. All right. And we're going to save this recording right now. Because that's fantabulous. Absolutely fantabulous.